Honourable Mr. Phil Speaker, <clears throat> what a curious choice of a minister to introduce this bill to the House. I want the House to listen to what Tony Ryle said just a couple of years ago in this very House. We do not quote, and I'm quoting from Hansard, Mr. Speaker, we do not believe that New Zealand should be constrained by the figment of what the United Nations may or may not state in various conventions. End quote. That's what this minister said in this House a couple of years ago, showing utter contempt for international conventions. And what a curious thing it is in the House today, Mr Speaker, that this same Tony Ryle gets up and moves the first reading of an international convention. What will the international community think about this House when a minister who has shown such absolute contempt for international conventions gets up and moves the first reading of this support for a Geneva Convention. I want Mr Ryle to stand up and apologise to this House for the contempt that he's shown in the past out of rabid populism for the observance of international agreements. You know, Mr Speaker, that minister said that we should have ignored 40 years of observance by successive New Zealand governments to conventions like the International Convention for the Protection of Civil and Political Rights. And now he stands up in the House and says that this is one that we should observe. Well, Mr Speaker, that's a very bad case of double standards. And how ironic, after we've just passed one bill in the House to extend a law that would have observed those conventions that the Minister spoke against five years ago or six years ago, that he's now in the successive in the succeeding bill saying that we should observe this one. Well, enough of that, Minister, and those double standards, Mr Speaker. Um, this is a bill that the Labor Party and opposition supports. In fact, it was under a Labor government that the Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade Committee uh, ratified this protocol back in 2007. Now, that might seem curious to you, Mr Speaker. That was, uh, that was five years ago, um, and I think this is a lesson to all select committees. This select committee uh, said at the time that this should not be considered a matter of urgency. Now, that is a very, very dangerous thing for a select committee to do, because five years later, this government, after dawdling along, has decided, after 90 countries have signed it and 60 have ratified it, that maybe New Zealand should do something about it. And uh, again, you have to worry about a government that cannot handle its legislative agenda competently in that way. Mr Speaker, this is legislation that will not in unduly encroach upon the time of this House. It's very straightforward. Uh, the Geneva Convention and the Third Protocol, which can be ratified following the passage of this legislation, is straightforward and it's worthy of support. I don't think there's a member in this House that wouldn't respect the work that the International Red Cross and the International Red Crescent does around the world. That symbol, uh, in, in each case, the Red Cross and the Red Crescent, is a symbol of an organisation whose uh, impartiality and independence and safety should be respected. Uh, and the work that those organisations do in situations of conflict uh, and in humanitarian crises is to be deeply respected. What this bill does uh, is enable us to ratify the third protocol, which establishes a third emblem. Not only the Red Cross, the Red Crescent, but this is a third emblem, which has been called uh, the, the Red Crystal, Mr Speaker. Why is it necessary to have a third emblem? Well, there are countries like Israel, which is neither Christian nor Muslim, uh, that find it difficult uh, that, this, that either of those emblems should be used in a protective way uh, in regard to their country. And equally, Eritrea, I think, was the other uh, country that found it difficult to use the emblem of either the Red Cross, which has Christian connotations, or the Red Crescent, which has Muslim connotations. So, Way back in uh, 1992, I think it was, um, people got together and said, well, how do we address these sort of situations? And in 2000, a joint working group proposed the third additional protocol. Uh, and five years later, in 2005, that was adopted by a two-thirds majority at the International Convention. Uh, even then, Mr Speaker, consensus was not achieved uh, again, largely because of conflict in the Middle East. 
a number of states from the representing the Arab League and the uh, Organisation for Islamic Conference voted against the adoption of this protocol. That was less about the protocol itself, Mr Speaker, than a desire by those states that there should be progress in addressing Geneva Convention breaches in the occupied Palestinian territories and a need for improvement in the humanitarian situation in those areas. Uh, I respect both of those concerns. I think both of those concerns are well founded, but that should not prevent New Zealand from supporting the adoption and the ratification of this protocol because it addresses a situation that does require a solution. Under the Geneva Convention, New Zealand has an obligation also to prohibit the unauthorised use of Geneva Convention emblems. There's a financial sanction, Mr Speaker, for the breach of, that, uh, of uh, misusing those emblems. And unfortunately, in our legislation, we put in place penalties which, many years after the event, no longer have a significant effect. In this case, the penalty of $1,000 was set in 1987. That's a long time ago. And properly, this legislation adopts a, a bigger penalty of $10,000, which is in line with uh, penalty levels for similar breaches. By enacting this bill, Mr Speaker, New Zealand will be able to ratify the third protocol, uh, which entered into force more than five years ago on the 14th of January 2007. We should join with the other 60 countries which have already ratified this protocol. We support the bill accordingly, and the sooner we can get this legislation through the House, the sooner, belatedly, New Zealand can join with other responsible members of the international community in uh, ratifying this agreement. I just hope that the Minister who has introduced this legislation has, has seen the error of his ways and no longer believes that you can ignore figments of uh, United Nations international conventions, as he so quaintly, but rather rapidly, put it back in 2005. I call John Hayes. Thank you, Mr.